there's both wired and wireless versions of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro. This is the wired version. There are also Xbox and PlayStation versions. This one's PlayStation. Now I might compare the wired and wireless in different videos, but for this one, I'm just gonna focus on the wired version. This one launched for $250, which is what I bought it for. And the wireless version launched for 350, which for its performance, I think that's ridiculous, but I'll talk about that in a different video. The wired Arctis Nova Pro is for people who already love the usual bright sound signature that SteelSeries offers in their other Arctis devices, but want even better drivers. Not only is the overall sound quality improved, but the headset and DAC are both high-res audio certified. More on that in a later section. Additionally, the Arctis Nova Pro is for those who want the additional features that come with this Game DAC 2.0. It's a very powerful amplifier with built-in EQ controls and SteelSeries sonar integration. As of this recording, the wired headset and DAC are always sold together, and I'll share my thoughts on that shortly. So starting with connectivity, of course, this device is compatible with the PC, PS4, and PS5. Now there are two ways to connect this device. You can use the 3.5 millimeter cable and plug that right into your controller or your PC, or you can plug the headset into this game DAC Gen 2 and then connect this by USB to your system or your PC. Now this connects using USB. There's a type C port that goes into the device itself and then a type A port that'll go into your console or your PC. And there's actually two USB ports. So you can actually have two different systems plugged in at the same time. And you can swap between which USB input you're utilizing. So if you had like your PS4 and your PC connected at the same time, you could switch between them using this dial. There's a lot of really cool controls with the game DAC. And then you would just plug your headset into the side right here. So before I get into the controls of both the headset and the game DAC, let me explain what the game DAC Gen 2 actually does and what it is. So the game DAC has a few purposes. First, it's made to provide a clean audio signal to and from the headset. Clean meaning the amp inside has an imperceptibly low noise floor with a signal to noise ratio of 111 decibels, meaning you won't hear any static feedback even at the highest gain. And this thing pushes a lot of power, making the Nova Pro and every other headset that I plugged into it incredibly loud at max volume. So it definitely has way more power than the Astros Mixamp Pro TR. Secondly, the game deck is capable of sending through high res audio. Specifically, it's capable of 24 bit 96 kilohertz audio and its frequency range is five hertz to 40 kilohertz. And the Nova Pro's drivers themselves have a frequency range of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. I'll explain why none of those numbers really matter in the headphone audio quality section, but those are a big selling point for the Game DAC Gen 2. Third, the Game DAC lets you swap between multiple pre-made EQ presets and you can create one, yes, only one, custom EQ curve on the fly using the DAC's controls or with SteelSeries Engine. You can also change the EQ in SteelSeries Sonar. In fact, this device has pretty good integration with it. It knows when it's being controlled by Sonar or if you're using SteelSeries Engine or something else. Since the custom EQ is saved to the device itself, you can use the same curve on PC and console. And again, you can even have both plugged into the game deck at the same time. Finally, PC only, you can control the chat gain mix. You can set certain communication audio sources like Discord to be the chat and the rest can be game. In order to access this functionality, you'll need SteelSeries Sonar running and have your different audio sources assigned correctly in the software and be set to the default audio source in Windows. Once you have all that done, you can adjust the volume level of the game or voice chat to get a perfect balance where one doesn't overpower the other. So now here are the controls starting with the Game DAC 2.0. The device actually comes with a tutorial as soon as you plug it in, so I'll just go over some of the basics. The wheel on the right lets you raise or lower the volume. You can also scroll through the menus with it, and clicking the button in the middle of the dial when at the proper screen lets you switch from changing the volume to the game chat mix. And then holding you in takes you to the menu. The small button in the left brings you out of the menu. So this is similar to the Astro Mixamp Pro TR, but it's a lot more streamlined. There are not a lot of controls on the headset itself, just this mic mute button right here, click in and out, and then the headphone gain, which you can scroll right here. Now the mic on the side is retractable, but I have some thoughts about how this was made because this actually comes with a pop filter. But how do you actually keep this on when it's closed? Well, I'll talk about that. Next is headphone audio quality. The shortest way to put this is the Arctis Nova Pro is a significant improvement from SteelSeries previous devices, but it's nowhere near worth $250 and heaven forbid $350 if you paid for the wireless version. I actually own six different Arctis headsets. You can see some of the boxes around. I have the Arctis 1, 3, 5, 7 Plus, 7 P Plus, and 9. In fact, this is the Arctis 9 right here. Aside from the Arctis 1, which is clearly a budget option, the rest of them have very similar drivers, and it sounds like they only have slight tuning alterations. And they all pretty much look and feel the same too. This is the Arctis 9, this is the Arctis 5. I didn't tell you, you might not know the difference. The Nova Pro finally switches things up. 
While SteelSeries continues with their emphasis on the treble and upper mid-range, the sound separation and clarity up there has been further improved. It's definitely a step above the Cloud Alpha. This is a good choice for footsteps as that's the range where they worked on the most. The mid-range, where vocals generally are, also has good definition to it without getting lost like what happens in the Arctis 5, 7, and 9 for example. Both the bass and sub-bass on the Arctis Nova Pro are very interesting because they clean things up quite a bit. I've always said Arctis headsets are for people that hate bass because not only is the power of the bass really weak, but the texture down there, especially in the sub-bass, is virtually non-existent. So lots of different low frequency rumbles mixed together in the Arctis 7 Plus for instance. Now out the box, the Arctis Nova Pro's bass is even weaker, but detail is much improved. It's still nothing impressive compared to the high quality base of devices like the Droplets Epos PC38X, but base definitely isn't why you get SteelSeries headsets anyway. Now the EQ potential of the Arctis Nova Pro is very impressive. This can be done on the DAC itself or in SteelSeries Engine or Sonar. And you can also use third party software if you want, but I'll talk about SteelSeries Engine and Sonar shortly. So the Arctis Nova Pro is similar to how the Razer Barracuda Pro's drivers give you a lot of room to work with before distorting. The Barracuda Pro is another very overpriced device for its performance, but the Arctis Nova Pro's drivers are way better than the Barracuda Pro's. Now I find that the sound signature of the Nova Pro is so bright overall that bass and sub bass are the only things I end up ever increasing, but the drivers do hold up quite well when doing so. If the Nova Pro headset was sold separately for the DAC for about maybe 130 to 150, I'd say that this would be a worthy purchase of that price for people who really enjoy a treble oriented sound signature. I'd say the Arctis Nova Pro is really like the opposite of the Dropos Epos PC38X. What this does as far as quality in the sub bass and the bass, this does in the upper mid range and the treble. So multiplayer FPS games are pretty good with this, but other media feels quite lacking. Unfortunately, as of this recording, this device has to be bought with the game deck for its launch price of $250. That might change, of course, but at that price range, it competes with the Odyssey Penrose, which launched for $300. And when it comes to sound, the Odyssey Penrose really shuts this thing down. Highs and upper mids, I can admit it does compete. I won't deny the work that the Nova Pro is doing up there. But the lower mids lack warmth, bass lines have no bite, and they don't stand out in the mix like on the Penrose. Sub bass on the Penrose is far superior. Again, as I've said in many other videos, it's not strong and powerful even if you boost it on the Penrose, but the quality is down there, it gets really deep. And when switching back and forth between the Arctis Nova Pro and the Penrose, you realize that you're only really hearing half the game on the Nova Pro. Warzone has a lot of different audio cues and the ambient sounds have a ton of dynamic range. So from the time the game starts, when you're hearing the helicopter and the engine and the blades to grenades, gunshots and enemies dropping out of the sky, all of these sounds are cleanly separated out and you can focus on each individually with the Penrose. The Nova Pro you can in the high end, but once it gets down to the lower mids, bass and sub bass, it's pretty empty down there. And this is why I think the Penrose is still better when it comes to FPS games, but just dominates it when it comes to music, immersive games, and movies, pretty much anything else. Just sound quality period, I think the Penrose beats it. Now about the high resolution audio, what does that really mean for the sound quality? Well, high res audio is a certification based on a few attributes that was created by Sony and is recognized by the Japanese Audio Association and Consumer Electronics Association. So to get the high res audio certification, a device must have a frequency response of up to 40 kilohertz or above and be able to play back audio in a format of at least 24 bit and 96 kilohertz sample rate. As stated before, the frequency range of the Arctis Nova Pro headset itself is from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz and the Game Deck Gen 2, 5 hertz to 40 kilohertz. Now most headsets and headphones have a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So with these, you get a much greater extension in the low and high frequencies. Also many of the DACs that are bundled in and included with a lot of the most common gaming headsets like the Cloud 2, the Razer Black Shark V2, stuff like that. These generally max out at 16 bit or 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. So on paper, high-res audio sounds amazing. In fact, if I was on SteelSeries list of shields who they send free products to, I'd probably tell you what those guys do, which is this headset and the DAC provide far superior sound to what other headsets and headphones can possibly provide. And this is all due to the high-res audio. But I'm not on that list, so I'm gonna tell you how it really is. The reason that most microphones, speakers, headsets, headphones have a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, it's because that's the range of human hearing. So when you stretch beyond that range, humans can't hear it. So there may be niche use cases for a stretch out frequency response range of that, but from a performance and sound quality perspective, you can't actually hear it so it doesn't make a difference. Now the second part of high res audio is that it can play back 24 bit 96 kilohertz sample rate. 
as you can see right here. And my hypothesis is this is why they insist on selling it with this game deck because hey, check it out. This deck can do that, but other ones can't. So haha, got them. But if you actually go in Windows sound settings, you'll realize that even your 3.5 millimeter headphone port can put out 24 bit 96 kilohertz audio. So I hate to break it to you, but you never really needed this deck to do that in the first place. Now this does get loud, probably louder than your PC's headphone port can put out, but that's about it. So what does this increased sample rate even do? Well, theoretically it gives you more detail, but I downloaded several 96 kilohertz audio tracks and I played them back and forth with the more standard versions that you can find on like YouTube or YouTube music. And I honestly couldn't hear a difference even with the compression that YouTube music and YouTube has. Adding a higher sample rate than 44.1 kilohertz doesn't have the same audible effect as going from like 1080p to 4K where there's a clear and obvious difference. The main thing you'll actually notice is that the FLAC or WAV files are just way larger, maybe 10 to 15 times larger than the normal files. A lot of times more than that. So you'll have files that are like a three minute song and it'll be like 150 megabytes. And you've got to know that games aren't playing 150 megabyte file audio clips every single time there's a sound cue. So the actual amount of media that's formatted in 96 kilohertz, it's minimal. So long story short, high-res audio started off as, and primarily still is, a marketing strategy. Still series chased those specs as far as the playback bit rate and the sample rate and the frequency response range that's been extended, not to get better headphone audio quality that you can hear, but they were chasing this, the high-res audio certification. Corsair did something similar with the HS80 specifications, but I gotta say there's no slick high-res label on the box of that. So I'm actually gonna talk about surround sound in the software section because it comes with Sister Series Sonar, but that's not actually tied to this DAC or this headset by itself. This does have integration with it, the DAC, but you can use it with any headset, so I do think it should be talked about separately. So yeah, again, headphone audio quality, decent, pretty good in the upper mids and the highs, worth $250, absolutely no way. Now out the box, the mic of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Probe, slightly above average. It's actually pretty clear and you can listen to it as you speak with the adjustable side tone that you can change on the DAC itself or in the SteelSeries software. The problem is just that the tuning, like most headsets, is just really bad as far as the EQ goes. Obviously it's way too nasally and, you know, it really sounds like most other SteelSeries Arctis devices. But wait, now I need to show you something sick, which is the software. So SteelSeries has several different apps inside their software. I'm going to be focusing on SteelSeries Agency. I have all these different artist devices and Sonar. Now, right now in Sonar, you can see my mic. I've set the mic in this device as the Arctis Nova Pro, and it's saying that because it's plugged into the game deck. But you can set that to any of the other microphone sources that you have, like I could choose the Blue Yeti here, but we're going to stick to this mic right here. So if I go over to this microphone tab, then I get a full 10 band EQ here and it goes up 12 decibels and down 12 decibels. And so check this out. Let me turn this background noise rejection off. So this is what it sounds like normally, just me talking into it, no filters. And now I have the equalizer on and I've boosted the bass quite a bit because it's so nasally. I dropped the upper mids and the highs down here, like you can see. And the background noise rejection, you can also throw that on. As you can see, it reduces static noises. That's something that was pretty big in the Corsair HS80 PC fans. I have a PC fan on right now, throw on that background noise. And here it is. So let me be quiet actually without this on. Now let me throw it on. And you can alter it so that you can have more or less noise reduction. And this is going to impact your voice. And then there's a lot of other stuff that you can apply here, like, you know, noise gate, smart voice. I'm not sure exactly what this does. And this clear cast noise cancellation. There's a lot of different things that some of it's in beta, you know, early access. But yeah, when the mic is EQ'd, it really just absolutely dominates any other mic that I've heard. But now you got to listen to this. Now I've switched over to the Corsair HS80. This was a mic that previously when I reviewed it before I got the Nova Pro, I was like, oh, this is the best mic. There's nothing else that's better than this. Well, again, out the box, this does sound better than the Arctis Nova Pro. It sounds better than any other mic that I've used, but it can't touch the Arctis Nova Pro when you get these EQ options in. But since you can apply this to any other headset, you can throw on this equalizer to the Corsair HS80 and this background noise rejection. Get rid of a little bit of that static, get rid of that fan noise. And now the Corsair HS80, because I do feel that it does have a slightly better mic itself with this EQ, it's just so good. So really what it is, is this software is just amazing. I think this is one of the best software that I've ever used. I used it when it was an early access and it had a lot of bugs, but 
This can make a lot of these headset mics really stand out. As long as they don't sound super compressed from like whatever DAC that you're putting it into, like the ones that come with like the Razer and the one that comes with the HyperX that's just not really that good, Cloud 2 and the Blackshark V2. But as long as the mic is pretty clean without a whole lot of distortion, you can EQ it, just make them sound like studio mics. So yeah, with all those adjustments, the microphone quality is drastically improved, though out the box, I do think that it's just above average. Now, I do recommend using this mic off to the side a little bit. A lot of times people like have it kind of wrapped around a lot of times, even in the instructions, they'll tell you to do that. But if you use it like this, you're going to have issues with plosives. So like, I'll just say some Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And then if you go ahead and put this pop filter on, it does help that a little bit, but Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked, but it's still not going to be ideal. I would just kind of use it out here. And I actually did lose this thing for a while because, you know, you can't actually scoot this all the way in. Yeah, so whoever designed the mic to make it retract like that, it looks slick, but they probably weren't the same people that thought about putting a pop filter on it and in the box. So it is what it is. So while I'm here, I'm actually going to stick to the Arctis Nova Pro while I talk about the rest of the software. So long story short, there are a ton of really useful features here. There's, like I showed, the mic EQ and all these different filters. And then you can do this for chat when you're actually listening to somebody talk to you. You can change there. So if their mic sucks, you can alter the way that that sounds, which is like just awesome. There's equalizer for your game, spatial audio. I'm, I'll really have to talk about this, like give it its own video. But really quickly, the spatial audio is really cool. The way this works is you can make things sound a little bit farther or closer. Like this is the distance. And I played it with Resident Evil and it was really fun playing it. It was kind of like when I used the Dolby Atmos, but this is a lot less of an intrusive software in my opinion. It does a lot of the same things as other software does where it just kind of like expands the sound stage virtually or it'll make it sound like this can make everything sounds closer or farther. I like that you can do that. Other ones that just kind of pick a distance for you and they'll add some reverberation to it. As far as performance and immersion, I'm not sure exactly what this slider does does i know what it says it does but it definitely doesn't help you with fps games competitively i kind of really hate that marketing that's the only thing that i really don't like about surround sounds that they make it seem like it will actually help you in that but there's only two drivers in the ear cups i don't care if you have 7.1 surround sound or however many channels you try to put into this headset you only have a right and a left ultimately so it's doesn't really matter like that but just for fun this is really cool to mess with at least the distance i'm just not quite sure what the performance versus immersion does I really like this EQ that they have. Let me go ahead and reset it. You can add in your own points in here and then you can change these and you can even change like how tight they are. And they really made the interface a lot better. When the interface first came out, it was a little bit like complicated, but now it's it's just sick. So you can get really specific with like, cause I like to say like Warzone, I, I usually increase the four kilohertz range. And you know, as it's labeled right here, upper mids, that's why I like this is, let's see, about four. And that helps me with Warzone. For other games, it might not help you. And some people say that they want to increase the bass in Warzone. They say that the, the footsteps are more around here. That's fine. Increase this and then keep it really tight with the parametric EQ. And then you can just boost that and leave everything else the same if you want. Or, you know, you can have just general bass increase or voice, which is like the mid range. And you have like just really good control. It's again, this software needs its own video, not just its own section. Now there's the more basic software, which is the SteelSeries engine. And this is where you can just have that same EQ that you're really using on the device. You can change the side tone of the mic. I absolutely hate that. Uh, some people love it though. Over here, you can change through these different presets and the custom presets, the same one that you have on the Nova Pro's DAC itself. The DAC knows that you're using this. It actually functions slightly differently uh, when you're using it. But let me go ahead and put it back to flat. But yeah, fantastic software. Look forward to the video whenever I get around to it. All right, last section, comfort and build quality. And this is another section that SteelSeries really stepped up in. They switched to these fake leather ear cushions and I really love them. If you are a fan of the cloth, the kind of scratchy cloth that they used to use that wasn't really that soft on previous Arctis devices, then you might be disappointed, but I really love the Switch. Now, as much as I love these, I like the way that the fit of the Cloud 2 and the Cloud 2 Wireless is. I think it's this headband that kind of like makes it clamp in a kind of weird way where it's like a little bit extra, like it's not pressure, but it's not as completely relaxed as the Cloud 2 and the Cloud 2 Wireless. I do like this a lot better than the Cloud Alpha though. That, the cushions on those are a little bit hard after you wear them for a while. But the new most comfortable headset on the market for me is the Razer Barracuda Pro. And just see how much or really how little these hold their shape with the memory foam. Just absolutely amazing. Love the Barracuda Pro when it comes to comfort. But these are still pretty good. I'd have these at an A, they're quite comfortable. Well, maybe a B plus just because of this headband. 
I just, okay, so they're not using that same ski goggle thing that they were using before, which is this whole thing, which you could like kind of like unstrap and then make it tighter or looser, but it was like, I just didn't like how you did that. This, they, I seem like they're trying to reinvent the wheel again. It's kind of hard to see here, but you can like take this off and then uh, there's like multiple points that you can put it on. And this has three little holes inside. So you can just kind of change the fit to your liking. But honestly, no matter how you put it, it just, there's no padding at the top. That's a problem that I have with it. So it'll never really fit like super nice. At least it doesn't really have any pressure. Like the Corsair HS80, I felt like that had been like caused me a lot of pressure, but this one, it's pretty decent. I don't really feel it too much, but not as comfortable as like just having padding. And they finally added adjustment brackets, which I absolutely love, finally. Now this doesn't help when it comes to the swivel because the swivel comes in and out, but you know, it defaults to clamping. So even at its maximum stretched out shape, it's still gonna choke you just like most headsets do. The only one that really doesn't that I've used is the Odyssey Penrose. Now the build as far as durability does feel a bit iffy because most of this device is made of plastic all the way down here. You just have a really thin strip of metal that's at the top. I'm not even sure if it's exactly steel, to be honest, it's steel series. I know this one's steel, this is the Arctis 9 and it has some stretch on it, but you know, this is actually kind of thin itself. Uh, this little metal headband. This has mostly plastic, but it has some steel at the top just for a little bit of reinforcement. So I like that. Now the speaker plates are detachable for some reason. I think that might be a holdover from the wireless version. I believe those have like a, like a USB port or something inside of them. But yeah, you can take this off just for fun, I guess. Because like I showed, it's completely closed inside. So it's not like you're going to make this like an open back headset, which, you know, I don't think is really necessary anyway. But yeah, it's just something else that you can lose, I guess. So I don't really have any complaints with this. I think that this is probably like overall, like I said, a B plus or an A minus as far as comfort, just because I don't really like this headband, but I do like the cloth. And I'm really glad to see SteelSeries stepping things up as far as comfort. And honestly, in terms of sound quality as well, and even the mic when you use the SteelSeries software, I think overall that's the general sentiment that I have with this device is it's a step up in pretty much all aspects compared to other Arctis devices like the Arctis 9. So here is my verdict. If you are a Steel Series fan, you like the way that their headsets sound, then I would recommend getting the Arctis Nova Pro, but only if you can find this thing on sale or if they eventually sell this separately from the DAC. $250 is just not justifiable for the sound quality of this device. When you compare it to something like the Odyssey Penrose, that just sounds absolutely amazing as far as the detail and the clarity and the definition that you're getting in the highs, mids, and lows, this thing really just can't compete with it.